chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I'm not gonna sing that song to you, but I'm gonna talk to you about chestnut fragrances today. Are you into the idea of chestnuts and fragrances? I've got 12 of them for you here, plus two bonus options that are not really focusing on the chestnuts, but they are contributing to the perfume. So find out all about chestnuts and fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in, it's Sebastian. And yesterday I'm talking about chestnuts and fragrances. I felt like it was a good idea to do a video on this topic today, this week, this month, because of the holidays and usually the time of year that we consume chestnuts. But for me, I grew up with them. When I was young, when we moved to the States, not many people ate them, but there's that famous song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire. But still, I don't know anybody that literally eats these things. So when I travel to Europe in the winter time, I usually buy them. They're usually selling them in stalls at uh, various you know, shopping areas and things like that. I absolutely love the flavor of chestnuts. I think they're also very much a delicacy in Italy and France as well, but I don't know any other countries. But they are starting to gain popularity in the usage of fragrances and uh, probably most, mostly because of By the Fireplace from Maison Margiela, but there are other fragrances here that I think kind of go in that same direction, but not necessarily identical. But also, in addition to the gourmands, I've got fragrances here that go more into the woody direction, earthy direction with the usage of the chestnuts note. Plus there's one that's kind of a bit on the aquatic marine direction as well. So various different directions. But I, again, I, like I said, I love this note. Do you guys consume chestnuts? Do you eat them? Are you a fan of this note? Do you know what they smell like? You don't eat them raw. They have to be roasted. That's why that famous song exists. And it's a bit of a challenge to roast them. I actually bought some recently. Unfortunately, they weren't the freshest. So once we roasted them, they were kind of bad on one side. So I don't usually consume them here in the States, but in Europe, they're so amazing. And then also in Europe, I see them on the ground, like from the trees, they've fallen because I can totally identify the chestnut as a big, meaty, very meaty, fleshy kind of a nut that to me, when, when they're roasted, because you can't eat them raw. I mean, you can, but it don't taste as good. But when they're roasted, they do pick up like a meaty, fleshy consistency and there's a really great flavor there. I absolutely love and enjoy in fragrances. So let's go ahead and get started. First fragrance I'm gonna to talk to you about is the one that's kind of going into the marine aquatic direction. This is Zara's Regal White, this one right here. It's an interesting fragrance in that it's created by Nathalie Lorson, but it does tend to go into that kind of watery, aquatic, beachy kind of direction and there's that kind of nuttiness that is the prominence of the chestnuts here along with those notes and then of course there's some musky notes as well there's figs and vetiver so it's a very unique fragrance not one of my favorites from this house which uh, recently they've been launching quite a bit of fragrances with different perfumers this one says Natalie Lorson real white do you guys enjoy this one let me know it's a pleasant fragrance it's not like a wow fragrance but I'm highlighting it here for a budget fragrance from Zara utilizing the chestnut note. And then the chestnut in here is not necessarily really prominent. So this is most likely not a chestnut fragrance because it's for me, it's pretty faint, but maybe you guys might pick up chestnuts more than I am. But either way, Zara's Regal White, not an absolute favorite of mine, but definitely worth talking about. But the next one I'm talking about is from the house of Brunello Cuccinelli. There are new fragrances that launched earlier this year. They just finally made it to the States. I bought mine in Milan at the Brunello Cuccinelli store when they had just put them out, which was great. The Pour Femme utilizes chestnuts. For me, this is going into a musky, woody direction with the usage of the chestnuts in Brunello Cuccinelli Pour Femme. So it's utilizing pink pepper, precious woods, chestnuts, orange blossom, bergamot, mandarin orange. And for me, this does have floral notes of orange blossom, but it's also very unisex compared to other feminine targeted releases. So for me, I felt like it was great to combine the Pour Femme with the Pour Homme to wear that, to make it a bit more substantial. But on its own, it's fairly decent. It's very peppery, very woody. There's some freshness with the flowers and the citruses, as I said, the orange blossom, bergamot, and mandarin orange. And then there's that unique chestnut note that comes in here, gives you that very 
interesting chestnut smell, kind of nutty, earthy, woody. And remember, the chestnuts for me have this kind of fleshiness. It's not necessarily hard nuts. They're almost like meat. They're softer once they're roasted. Very interesting note for me, and I do enjoy them in fragrances. So this is Brunello Cuccinelli Pour Femme. Totally different than the Pour Homme. Again, very unisex also. Then we're moving to a house called Zadig and Voltaire. This is, this is her. These are two feminine targeted releases. This is her is more gourmand than Brunello Cuccinelli Pour Femme and the first fragrance Regal White from Zara. This is a milky lactonic fragrance, which has that kind of nutty, chestnutty touch in here. In the end, it's sandalwood, whipped cream, cashmere wood, chestnuts, pink pepper. Very, very lactonic and creamy here. Very smooth, and I feel like the whipped cream, sandalwood together, create a very, very smooth milkiness about this fragrance, which I feel like the chestnuts added to the milkiness really does create this very beautiful gourmand lactonic experience with the nuttiness and the fleshiness of the chestnuts. It's that very unique and distinct smell mixed with that lactonic quality of the fragrance, which makes it very, very comforting. Again, chestnuts are very unique in smells. They don't smell like any other nuts out there. And again, they're also not dry, especially when they're roasted. There's that kind of meaty fleshiness about them and they're chewy rather than crunchy. And here, definitely very much experience it here. But I put this one lower because I'm ranking the other fragrances a little more. But this uh, Zadig and Voltaire, this is her, has a huge following for a milky lactonic fragrance. So this is a great one. Check that out at number Number 10, this is a ranked list. The next one is a male targeted release, although I think this particular version is unisex, but the original line is um, uh, masculine targeted, male targeted. This is Armani Stronger With You Leather. Out of all of the kind of Middle Eastern style Stronger With You Leather, uh, Stronger With You fragrances, the leather is my favorite. The oud and the the oud is okay, but the amber was really a major disappointment. I didn't care for it whatsoever. It didn't veer too much away from the stronger with you DNA. And for me, out of the all three, the leather is the most unique, and it has it does have the chestnuts note in it. It's vanilla, chestnuts, leather, spices, elemi, guyac wood, oud, sage, and lavender. The fragrance is fairly synthetic. You can totally notice it. It's also very potent, but I like the smoothness of the chestnuts against the vanillic touches and the leather in here. There's the spices that come in to create the more of a spicy edge. For me, it gives you a bit of a light holiday vibe with leather thrown in. And this is not an animalic leather, so it's definitely wearable. If you like the idea of, you know, designer leather fragrances. Along the way, you also have woods, a little faint touch of oud and lavender and aromatics, lavender and sage note. I feel like this is, again, favorite of the three kind of Middle Eastern styled Stronger With You fragrances. But, um, you know, everybody has different tastes. And I'm putting it here at number nine. So this is Stronger With You leather. And then another male designer fragrance. This is going to the house of Givenchy. It's Gentleman Givenchy, Givenchy Gentleman EDP Reserve Privé. You know, this is a really, really super sexy smell. But for me, performance is a bit dismal. Although it has gotten better with the fact that the juice has aged a bit in the bottle. But still, I find the original EDP performing much better than the Reserve Privé. But for me, man, such a sexy smell. So, so beautiful. It smells fantastic. The iris, which is typical in the original DNA of the fragrances. The woods, the amber together, top notch, along with that nutty, you know, fleshy, meaty chestnut note in here. Fantastic. You can totally pick it up. Super, super amazing. It's nutty, but in that kind of chestnut way nutty. Along with some booziness from whiskey and bergamot, the fragrance smells amazing. So you just have to pile it on and I've heard from people it performs really great and also from people it does not perform whatsoever so for me it's the non-performance but man smell wise it's really really great too bad it doesn't perform because in the end this would have ended up being my favorite of the entire line of Givenchy Gentleman fragrances but as far as smell goes check it out it's a great nutty fragrance a great chestnutty fragrance and one that's a designer out there on the market now so definitely most likely it has following the next fragrance we're going to the house of sospiro it's contralto this one right here so this one first off does have a reminder of balda afrique from the house of byredo so there's that going for it but also it's much more potent than balda afrique so if you're complaining about the performance of balda afrique from 
the house of Byredo, check out Contralto from Sospiro. They're not quite un identical, but when you're wearing it, you'll be reminded of it. And this version does have the chestnuts, which adds that kind of unique nutty characteristic that the chestnuts has in fragrances. But in the end, it's juniper, pink pepper, chestnuts, Peru balsam, guyac wood, vanilla, cloves, orange blossom. Where's the vetiver? Because Balda Afrique is vetiver. This is utilizing other notes to kind of smell similar. And I absolutely love the way it smells, especially knowing that it has chestnuts. And also not going into the gourmand direction. This is not a gourmand fragrance. Even though it has that Peru balsam, it's very balsamic and ambery for sure. But in the end, really great fragrance. Really wonderful. Not truly original, but if you like the idea of a kind of a woody take on the, uh, the chestnut fragrance, definitely check out Contralto from the house of Sospiro. Let me know if you're a fan of that house in that fragrance. Moving on to the house of Liquid Imaginaire. It's Bait Humane, this one right here. So this to me is a very interesting fragrance. It has a very, very prominent note of chestnut. Very prominent. But once again, this is not a gourmand. This is utilizing that nuttiness of the chestnut, but going into the woody, aromatic, earthy direction. And also ozonic. I think the, the color of the bottle and the, uh, the fact that it's ozonic with violet leaves in it makes for you know, kind of a reminder of what direction it's going to go in. So lots of chestnuts, violet leaves, woods, papyrus, cypriol, vetiver, pine, guyac wood, mastic resin, cumin, and sandalwood. It's not necessarily my all-time favorite liquid imaginaire fragrance, but it's done so, so well. And the chestnut note is mostly the star here, along with the violet leaves, the woods, and the papyrus cypriol combo. For me, those two notes really stand out against the chestnut, really adds a nice contrast to that kind of fleshy meatiness of the nuttiness of the chestnut, and then the ozonic touches of the violet leaves. It's great. If you like violet leaves, earthiness from the papyrus and cypriol, nuttiness from the chestnut, ozonic touches and uh, all that good stuff. Check out Bet Humane from the House of Liquid Imaginaire. Really, really great. And then the next one is Super Gourmand and very, very traditional, very, very authentic smelling chestnuts for me, roasting on an open fire. Just imagine buying them right there in front of you when where they've been roasting on an open fire or whatever they roast them and sell them to you. And you've got that kind of charred, burned, smoked taste against that meaty fleshiness of the chestnuts that's inside. You open up the shell because it opens up and then you eat that thing. It's so delicious. And M. Mikolov's Secrets of Love Gourmet is just like that. But just, just, just make sure to know this is uber, uber smoky and that authentic smoky charred smell of the burned the shell of the chestnuts is captured in here 100%. So it's vanilla, leather, incense, chestnuts, and oud. So it's gourmand with smoky, leathery, earthy, woody touches. Really super fantastic. One of the most authentic to me. If you like the idea of by the fireplace, but you want more authentic smoke and burn char smell against gourmand notes and you know, chestnut notes, definitely check out this one, Secrets of Love Gourmet from the house of M. Mikolov. So remember, this is a ranked list at number four. We've got Etat Libre de Orange's Fat Electrician. So Fat Electrician is not gourmand. To me, this is a vetiver fragrance going into the gourmand direction. In the end, it's mostly about the vetiver along with whipped cream and marron glacé, which is candied chestnuts. And here, the marron glacé, the whipped cream, also vanilla, I should say, along with the vetiver is what's really driving this fragrance. So if you think vetiver is a boring note, you don't like it, you like the idea of gourmand, here is really a great combination because the vetiver kind of stands out next to the idea of these gourmand notes, whipped cream, marron glacé, vanilla, together, kind of a contrast against that very earthy, woody, aromatic note of vetiver in here. But there's also olive leaves in here, myrrh and a poppinax, but I think it's definitely one of the best from this house and a really great gourmand vetiver fragrance that's super delicious and then focusing on that marron glacé which is basically candied uh, chestnuts. So this is Fat Electrician from the house of Etat Libre Orange. We've got one more Etat Libre Orange fragrance coming. Next one is from the house of L'Artisan Parfumer. It's Noir Exqui, this one right here. So last time I checked was about two months ago this was still selling. So I haven't checked currently. Hopefully it's still selling as it's definitely one of the best from this house and definitely one of the best gourmands out there, especially utilizing the chestnut note. Chestnut is king here. It's the focus note along with maple sap, vanilla, coffee, ebony, tonka beans, sandalwood, and heliotrope. I guess this is also kind of a faint idea of something like 
by the fireplace, but in a different direction. It's nutty, it's syrupy, vanillic. Also the idea of coffee, if you like fragrances like follow or followed and things like that, but this time going into the nutty chestnut direction. Remember, chestnuts to me are very, very unique. They don't smell like other nuts. Uh, and also there's that whole meaty, fleshy consistency when you're eating them after they've been roasted. Here, you don't have the smoke like you have in the previous uh, fragrance from uh, Mikolov, but you do have the chestnuts full on mixed with all these gourmand notes. And it's super delicious. One of the best creations from Bertrand de Chaffaut. This is L'Artisan Parfumer's uh, Noir Exquis. Really yummy fragrance there. And then the next one is also Etat Libre Orange. This is Frustration. And once again, we've got chestnut wood in, in this, this one. Chestnut wood, it says. But it's cumin, cinnamon, rum, vanilla, vanilla absolute, cistus absolute, chestnut wood accord, bourbon vetiver, and vinyl gayacol. For me, the idea is kind of similar to something like by the fireplace, but once again, going in a different direction. This time, we don't have any smoke. And with by the fireplace, I don't get smoke much from it when you compare it to uh, the Mikulov. I mean, this is ultra smoky when you compare by the fire. This one to me, absolutely no smoke, more creamy, ambery direction with some spices. And then of course that woodiness of the chestnut wood accord that's in here. Spices do come in. So there's a little bit of a holiday vibe with frustration and uh, it's super delicious, I should say. So this is frustration from the house of Etat Libre Orange. That's two fragrances from that house. And number one, is by the fireplace. Definitely one of the best from this house and one of the best examples of chestnuts and fragrances. It's smoky, but again, smoke for me, when you compare it to the smoke in uh, the Gourmet Secrets of Love by M. Mikolov next to this, that this thing doesn't have much smoke compared to that because that's uber realistic, you know, roasted uh, smoked chestnuts. And this one, to me, it's faintly sm smoked, but super delicious gourmand. Once again, very much a holiday vibe. It's vanilla, chestnuts, gayak, peru balsam, cloves, and pink pepper. It smells really, really great. I can see why people like this one. It's very, very inviting and comforting, and it's a crowd pleaser, and it's not overwhelming. In the end, it's a gourmand, but still not overly sweet and things like that. It has nice contrast and ambery touches and spices and warm spices and vanillic things, and then, of course, the chestnuts that are in here. So this is by the fireplace from the house of Maison Margiela. And that is the number one fragrance for you guys. And that's the list of chestnut fragrances. Let me know if you are a fan of this note. Let me know if you've never experienced a fragrance with chestnuts as a note. Then let me know what's missing. This is all I had. I looked up all kinds of fragrances I can find with chestnuts. And this is all I have in the collection here in the studio. And I, I felt like it was a, appropriate to do a video on this note, especially since it's consumed around this time of the year, especially for me when I was growing up, we had chestnuts during the holidays. It was kind of a special thing, prize thing. It's a bit expensive, but definitely very luxurious and really yummy to have during the holidays. So let me know if there's any other chestnut fragrances that you guys enjoy. Put a comment down below so I can find out and stick around for the two bonus options as well. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, the two additional fragrances I have for you do feature chestnuts, but they are definitely very, very faint supporters of whatever else is going on in the fragrance. The first fragrance is from the house of Orza El Legrand that she removes this one right here. So in this one, between this and the other one I'm gonna talk about, I get the chestnuts more. And this one to me is very appropriate to be, you know, combining the chestnuts. In the end, this is very earthy and it's a sheeper fragrance and also has all kinds of vegetal kind of notes. It has earthy notes, mushrooms, it has soil tincture, green notes and fennel and mint and galbanum and angelica, also oak moss because it's a sheeper after all, and fern and clover, mushroom soil, all of these things and it has chestnuts as well. So I feel like the chestnuts do contribute a nice you know, that fleshy, meaty nuttiness that chestnuts have in this fragrance, but fairly faint, I should say. And the other one is from the house of Tiziana Terenzi. It's Porpora. I don't get it much in this one, maybe perhaps weighing the faint back when I'm smelling it and really, really focusing on this fragrance, because to me, this is a, a fragrance that's very portrait of a lady like from Frederick Mall, but perhaps they have something nutty in the back there that's kind of shining through on some people. For me, I don't get the chestnuts much in this one compared 
to the Orza Elegrand uh, Sheep Mousse. And that's why I've left these two fragrances here as bonus options for you guys to check out, especially if you're looking for something not overly chestnutty and you want to discover something like Porpora or Sheep Mousse from the house of Orza Elegrand. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Stick around for another video soon. Bye-bye.